Okay, okay. Um, um, I called, I called Roger, Roger, Roger today, today, and, and actually, actually, actually uh, uh, Brenda's, Brenda's, I got the mic, I got the mic, yeah. sorry, sorry. Can you hear me out now? Is that loud enough? Is that okay? I'm going to use this. Can you make it a little louder? Yeah, you can go in the back and make it louder if you want to. Um, anyway, I called Roger, um, and he said Brenda actually was doing a little better. She uh, went to her uh, dental appointment, and uh, she said that the, uh, is that a little, that's better. That's okay. It's not too loud. Um, and uh, I was asking him if the weather affected her. He says she's inside most of the time, but it's nice when it's a little bit cooler. She can go to her doctor's appointments, and uh, so that's good. We um, actually went to see her Friday. I know she wasn't eating good, so she told me a few years ago she really likes soup anytime, even in the summertime. So I made some homemade chicken noodle soup to take to her and went and delivered it Monday after her appointment. I forgot that she had her dental appointment. And she actually did look really good. It was surprising. Well, it. And she wasn't gasping for breath or any of that. Yeah. And that's even after her doctor. After the appointment. So I was pleasantly surprised. Oh, that's good. So soup, I have to remember that. Yeah. Um, so who else would be praying for? Any other, uh, any other needs tonight? Um, we have elections coming up this Sunday. Is that right? Here? So we'll be praying for those. And we'll have the uh, picnic afterwards. I haven't looked at the weather. Is it going to be good weather on Sunday? Anyway, we'll be hey, a little rain Saturday and Sunday. Well, that's okay. We need it anyway. So uh, the creek's running dry. Um, but we'll be inside anyway for the picnic, right? Okay. Good. Um, anybody else we can be praying for? Uh, my co-workers got to have a procedure tomorrow for a kidney stone. Mm -hmm. How many lists you have seen? Probably. It's a 10 by 6 one millimeter. He said it's football shaped. <laughs> What's his name? Chad Pritchard. Pritchard's P R I T C H A R D. Well, I've been there, done that, and got, got a t shirt, so uh, <laughs> you know, I can make the pies. Anybody else? We're still praying for our little church down in the, in, in Taiwan. Um, they're still taking it pretty hard. The, the service for her will be Saturday, um, which will be actually Sunday out of time. So we'll continue to pray for them. So let's, uh, let's pray. Father, uh, we thank you so much just for your, your wisdom and uh, just seeing the creation, just the cool mornings that we've had, the beautiful weather. And um, Father, we know that you provide the rain when we need it. We just thank you so much for that. Our hearts continue to go out to uh, all the families that have lost houses and loved ones out in Hawaii. And Father, continue to comfort them and just help them to find the ones that haven't been uh, uh, found yet. Um, Father, we thank you that Brenda's doing better and uh, continue to pray for her day by day that you give her the strength that she needs and just, uh, just encourage uh, her and Roger. And, um, thank you. Uh, uh, again, just for Mars Hill, we just pray for the elections coming up and the picnic this Sunday. Just uh, pray for a good time, good time of fellowship together, and uh, just for wisdom as we uh, make make uh, elections as we follow so far. Um, also, um, we just lift up our little church in, in Kingsland. Uh, I just thank you for this pastor that's wanting to help them and help out, and uh, just thank you for the encouragement that he's really good to them. So we just uh, look forward to uh, sharing you tonight and just a good time of fellowship. And uh, I'll just pray that we might, again, just really look to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Daniel. Daniel. Huh? Daniel. Oh, and Daniel, yes. I pray for Daniel on vacation. They've had good weather, hopefully. So that's good. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, depression tonight. I, I want to spend most of the time just really talking about mild depression and how to deal with that. Um, a lot of our biblical heroes have been depressed. Um, you know the very first uh, incidents of depression in the Bible? You know who got depressed first? It was actually Cain. Yeah, it was Cain. It, the scripture says um, 
Whenever Abel brought fat portions, uh, Cain's offering, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry and his face fell. Uh, so he was our first uh, depressed person on the, on the earth. But I imagine maybe Adam and Eve may have gotten really depressed after they, they lost, their, lost their son. Who else? Who else was depressed in the Bible? You know? Any other? David. Uh, David. Um, yeah, I don't remember uh, David. Well, yeah, he went through some hard times. Who, who wanted to die? How many people in the Bible wanted to die? Got depressed so severely. Jonah. Jonah. Yeah, Jonah. Jonah did. Yes, Jonah did. And uh, just take my life, Lord. And he was all upset that Nineveh was destroyed. Job also uh, got depressed. Um, and Jonah. Um, who else? So we got Job. How about Moses? Remember Moses being depressed? He got all upset. He just he says, Can I did I conceive all these people? Did I give them birth? He says, where am I going to get meat for all these people? Am I going to have to carry these people? The burden is too heavy. You're going to treat me like this. Just kill me. Kill me at once. Um, <laughs> poor Moses. So he got depressed. Um, last Wednesday, who did, we talk, who did Daniel talk about last Wednesday? Elijah. Elijah. Remember on the mountain? He had a big high, a big victory there on the mountain. And then uh, Jezebel said, I'm going to kill him. So he started running. And uh, he was just exhausted. That happens all the time. After you have a big high, then you crash. And that's what happened to Elijah. And um, he, he says, I sat down in the room to him and asked that he might die. It's enough now, Lord. Take away my life. I'm no better than my father's. I think it's really interesting the way that the Lord treated him uh, during that time. You know what he did? I mean, he, he was exhausted. Um, I remember, I'm going to share a little bit about Janet. Um, Janet, after our third son went through depression, what was the first thing I made you do? Maybe exercise. Well, about sleep. before that, sleep. That's right, because she was exhausted too. Um, and that's what God did with Elijah. Just put him to sleep. He woke him up, and then what did he do? He fed him, fed him, and he put him back to sleep. And uh, woke him up, fed him again. He energized him, basically. So that, I just think that's really neat, the way the Lord treated him uh, during that time. So that was Elijah. Um, Jeremiah, you know, Jeremiah, Jeremiah was depressed too. Um, he says, why did I come out from the womb? Is he tall and sorrow? He says, uh, why didn't he kill me in the womb? My mother would have been my grave and her womb forever great. So he, poor Jer Jeremiah, he was, he was depressed. And uh, we said, Jonah, we said, Jeremiah, did you get anybody else? Elijah. Moses, Job, Cain. Yep. So these are these are our Bible heroes. But you know, they're they're normal people. They're no different than we are. Um, you know, I have a lot of patients that come in and say, I have emotional illness in my family or mental illness in my family. <laughs> I say, um, everybody does. We're, we're physical, emotional, spiritual beings. If you have physical illness in your family, then you have emotional illness. There's always been sort of a, a stigma or a reluctance to, uh, to seek help for emotional and um, mental problems, including the depression. Um, unfortunately, feelings of depression are seen as a sort of a sign of weakness or um, a signal something's out of balance. And um, most people think, uh, oh, I'll just pull myself up by my bootstraps, I'll snap out of it. If you came to me, and you had a fever and a cough and chest pain, um, I'd do an x-ray and say you had pneumonia. And you'd say, it's okay, doc, I'll just, I'll snap out of it, I'll just pull myself up on my bootstraps. Would you say that? No, you'd never say that. It's the same way with depression. I explain to patients, it's like having a pneumonia of your soul, is what it is, and it needs to be, needs to be treated. Not necessarily with medication, but it does need to be attended to. So, you just think about that. Um, I think it takes away a little bit of that stigma. Um, pneumonia physically, you can have a pneumonia emotionally too. And really, uh, really bother you in that way. Um, if um, a lot of things can cause depression, what might, think about that. What's something that might cause someone to spiral into depression? Sickness. Pain or something like that. 
I'm sorry? Sickness or death. Sickness or death, so loss. Yeah, Rick. Pain. Pain, okay, good. And that all of these have to do with loss. Something, uh, a loss physically, a loss emotionally, a loss could be of your job, could be of a divorce, a loss of a spouse. Um, it, it's normally a loss, but other things can do that. Um, when you're, after you're pregnant, you have a lot of hormones that, that change. There's one particular, it's called serotonin. You ever heard of that, serotonin? And it'll, it'll drop down. And we see that in everyone with depression. Those serotonin levels drop down. We'll, we'll talk about how to deal with those in a little bit. Um, so look at, your, look at your handout. And those of you at home, I, I can get your handout if you let me know. Um, and you see the first page, it talks about symptoms and treatment. You know, I said depression affects us physically, emotionally, and spiritually. You know, um, I was talking about the loss of health. People that have heart attacks, people that have strokes, um, you see depression there almost all the time with that, just that loss of, uh, being at loss of function. Um, but you know, I, I use a little story, um, especially as we get wiser and more mature, we're not able to do things that we maybe did when we were younger. You remember when uh, Paul and Silas were in prison and um, they were probably just on the ground, chained up, and there were rats running around. What were they doing at midnight? Do you remember? Singing. They were singing. They were singing. Now, physically, they couldn't do much, could they? <laughs> they couldn't get out or anything. But emotionally, you couldn't imprison them emotionally. They were, they were flying. They were, they were singing, singing away there. So let's look at some of the symptoms here that you might have uh, with depression. Um, physically, sleep problems. What might be a problem with sleeping? Sleep too much, or maybe you can't sleep. You have either of those extremes might happen. And how, how would you deal with that? What might, how might you treat that? Well, habits, most of the habits, if you're laying there with your phone or watching TV at, at, when you're going to sleep, that's not gonna help. If you're drinking uh, coffee or something, caffeine in the evening, that's not gonna help. So a lot of that is just dealing with habits. And um, we can get into more of that later. We'll have time for questions at the end. Appetite, um, you can eat too much or you can not eat enough. It can be eat either way. You can just eat, 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 or maybe you don't have any appetite, don't want to eat anything. Um, fatigue, tired. It's interesting, I say when you're tired, what, what do you need to do? Exercise. Exercise. You see this? Running is cheaper than therapy. That's right. Okay, so exercising it. Really, when, when you're tired in depression, it's really more of an emotional thing. So you get on a walk. Remember me talking about serotonin? Exercise actually gets your serotonin levels up about as good as medicine does. So that's always keep that in the back of your mind. Just getting up and walking, uh, especially in the cool of the morning these days, get out and walk for a while, walk with somebody and pray, or just get out and walk 15, 20 minutes. And again, that gets your serotonin levels up. So that's a good, good way to treat that. So physical, physical symptoms. Emotional symptoms um, will be sad. We may not have any interest in doing things that we like. We withdraw, we keep things in. Um, so I have music over there. Tell me about that. Music, what kind of music? Somebody put that on some TV. <laughs> You want to play, you want to play upbeat, yeah, uplifting up, up, music, yeah, that's right. And you know, where would we see that in the Bible, that, that treatment for music? Where do we see that? Psalms. Okay, so somebody specifically was treating somebody that had mental illness with uh, music. Remember David playing for Saul? Remember that? Yeah. So uh, music, I, I just feel like music is something that the Lord has given us. It's a real gift. And so keeping music going, just, um, you know, when you're sad or emotional, it's just really, really uplifting. Actually, that we've been doing that about every day, singing different hymns to our church in Taiwan, and just trying to uplift them. So that, that helps, just keep the music going. Um, when you don't have any interest in doing things, or um, maybe things just aren't as fun for you, what, what do you do then? You do it, still. 
just make up your mind you're going to do that. Um, how about if you to withdraw from people? What what might you want to do there? Yeah. Call somebody. Yeah. Seek seek somebody out. Seek them out. Seek maybe just a close friend you can talk to, or just um, yeah, seeking people out. Um, keeping things in. You know, when you have a teapot and you have the top on there, it's on there tight, and water starts boiling. If that top's on tight, what's going to happen? <laughs> Get out of the way. That's right. So you have to let that let that steam off, don't you? Um, it's the same way. If we keep things in, it's just gonna just gonna be worse and worse. So you gotta get out. Just call call someone. Or just talk with them. Or if you got a goldfish, whatever, talk to the goldfish. Just to get get those feelings out. Um, again, these are just things whenever talk we're. To God. Yep, you can talk to the Lord about that. Just say, diaries are a good thing to uh, use to just writing things down. Um, Again, this is sort of a mild depression. We'll, we'll look at that in a little bit too. But um, this is really almost prophylactic, just to prevent prevent depression. You feel yourself start to spiral. These are things to pay attention to. The spiritual aspect. A lot of people ask me, do you, do you think Satan causes depression? What do you think? Any ideas about that? It's hard to tell. I personally don't think so, but when you're down, Satan's going to take advantage of you. He's going to jump right in there and, and beat you even, even further. So Christians particularly, when we start to spiral, one of the first things that go, our prayer life, our time in Scripture, and we just we just don't enjoy things, and then we're just, we're just pulling out. So we really have to just to make ourselves read. Again, the music is a good way to do that. The fellowship, same fellowship. You look over on the left, you see the spiritual problems. There's no hope, anxiety, uh, no worth, and suicide. And this is really where Satan comes in. Satan um, is a father of lies, deceit. He does, he's really um, just against life. Because God, God is life. So Satan really help, help, causes people to spiral. This is when depression is really pretty severe. Um, you know, you just say you're just not worth anything. Just kill yourself, and that's what that's what happens. Um, so we're going to talk about this a little bit, a little bit too. Um, how to how to deal with that? Um, again, spiritually, when you find you can't pray, um, use the scripture, use the Psalms. Just to help you help you pray, and again, music is great for that. Um, and um, the other thing about depression, um, you tend to be critical, a lot of negative, negative thinking. Um, and how can how can you fight that? How can you fight that that negative thinking that we would have? Any ideas? I want you. There's a scripture. There's something called cognitive behavioral therapy. You ever heard of that before? Cognitive behavioral therapy. It's from Philippians 4 8. You had your Bibles. Let me just read that. It says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. If you got a pen, write these words down on your on your paper there. Write down true and noble and right and pure and lovely. Excellent and praiseworthy. Now I want to show you how our how our thoughts, the very first word there, what is true, it really, this is really cognitive behavioral therapy, how do you deal with this? Okay. Let's say you're at a at a party or maybe we're fellowshipping, 
and you're talking with Alex, whoever he is. When you talk to him just for a short time, he never looks at you. He's looking over your shoulder, uh, never makes eye contact at all. Um, so, a couple of things you could be thinking. If you think, wow, Alex is really rude, what would your mood be at that point? If your thought is, Alex is rude, what's your mood going to be? He doesn't care. Yeah, care. Yeah, that's right, irritated, he doesn't care. Now, how about if he, if you think maybe your thought is he just doesn't find me interesting, what would your mood be then? He just doesn't find me interesting at all. He might be a little sad. Okay, a little sad, that's good. And how about if you think maybe Alex is just shy? What would your mood be then? Concern for him. Yeah, concern or caring. So you see how these thoughts really affect our moods, don't they? Say you're at the grocery store and the cashier just throws the money out at you. You can think, wow. What up? <laughs> yeah, you can get real angry at her. And, or you can think, man, she must be having a bad day. You know, really, really be concerned for her. Um, you know, you're going to ask you know, to pray for her or something. Just pray for her. Um, another situation, maybe you're in traffic. There's a traffic jam, like there was on 95 this morning. Yeah, it was this morning. You could think two things. You could be angry, couldn't you? And uh, frustrated. yeah, frustrated. Or you could turn on the radio and listen to some Christian music and just uh, say, "Oh, great time out!" Uh, just been praying or listening to music. So you see how our thoughts really affect affect our mood. So we have to look at what's true. Okay, when the cashier threw the money out at you, what, what's what's true in that situation? We we don't really know, do we? But our thoughts just gonna gonna spiral us. Um, so just thinking about, um, you know, maybe what, what negative thoughts. I want you to think about maybe what negative thoughts you all have. Um, and example, your heart might be racing, so you think, I'm going to die. Um, yeah, that's negative. That's not true. Um, maybe your children, you say, oh, they're, they always make bad choices. Um, that must be my fault, you know. Give me some other examples. What's some other negative thinking that you that you go through? Thinking about the future, maybe you're worrying. What are some good negative thoughts that you have? Good yeah, good, good, good <laughs> negative thoughts. <laughs> and we'll look at whether they're true or not. See, that's that's the whole thing. You want to see it? Is that really true? Is that really true? Here comes Cat. Hello, young lady. Come on in. So I'm still waiting on some negative, negative thinking. Jenny came up with quite a few the other day. Oh, okay. You, mean, you like to say it's your fault, right? I, I know with our church in, in Taiwan, I, it's easy to think that they just won't be able to stay together as a church now. Okay. I worry. I think their future is not very good. Yeah. So that's negative thinking. So how can you, what's true there? What can we think? What's true? Well, Whose church is that? It's God's church. That's right. He's in control. Yeah. And yeah. there are good leaders there. Yeah. Who have yeah. potential. Yeah. So it's easy just to stay on the negative side of that, isn't it? Instead of really being thankful for what, what they do have there. What's another negative thought? Um, we have negative thoughts about our children. And I always tell Janet, okay, so she'll take the blame for that for our kids being bad. And I say, now if we've got, if we have a, you know, one of the children becomes a president or a pastor, are you going to take credit for that? Um, how can you take credit for the negative? You don't take credit for the for the positive. So Nathan's real successful with his truck. Is that you take credit for that? No. <laughs> okay. Any other? Give me some other negative thoughts. Government. Right, the whole just going to spiral. Yeah, the whole thing. No reason to even go vote, right? Yeah. So what's what can we look at that's positive there? What's true? 
But it's true. That is fertile and I'm no. <laughs> <laughs> Now what's true? Really think about what's true. God is in control. That's right. God is in control. The, yeah, the nations rage, but the God's exalted. Give me some more negative thoughts. We're going to deal with all these negative thoughts today. So what I want you to do when you have a thought like that, again, think what's true. See these words here, what's true, what's right, what's pure, ever more excellent, praiseworthy. He says, think about these things. Um, again, when you just, just start to spiral with that critical negative thinking, you think, okay, is that really true? Is that really true? Some things may be partially true, but they're not the whole truth. Yep. I mean, the, the world is a mess, <laughs> and there are problems, but it's not the whole truth. Story. That's right. Yeah. Good. Good. Any other negative thoughts? Um, why don't you give Kathy a hand up and she can go to the Philippians 4 8 is a great verse just to print it out and put it on your mirror in the morning and uh, help you just to have thankful, uh, thankful hearts. Um, good. Okay. Now, why don't we turn over to the back? What, if you think someone might be depressed or um, maybe one of your loved ones or, or anyone, what, what would you do? What can you do if that, you know, you're thinking someone's depressed? Well, what can you do? Spend time with them. Okay. Encourage. Encourage them. Just tell them to go to a doctor. Well, this little test on the back will help you with that. Um, if you can get them to take it, or if you know them real well, you can even take it for them. Um, if you score less than 10, then, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's fine. It's probably just more of a mild, uh, uh, well, five and nine would be sort of a mild depression and really wouldn't um, need medicine in that sense. You would go through the treatment that I have there on the right, just exercising and getting them out. That's where a friend can really help with them. And just fighting that, that negative thinking, um, that critical thinking. When you find that you're critical of, of everybody, um, you know, if you just have that critical attitude, that's, that's sort of the starting point. So you really have to, have to come up from that. Um, and then think about what's true and uh, just catch yourself with that. Now, if you're uh, scoring 10 or so, we're getting into moderate depression at that point. And that would be a reason to see a doctor um, or ask me about it or whatever. Um, you would need to be treated. Um, and a lot of times, um, I would just treat patients just with, well, with what you've seen there, just with um, cognitive behavioral therapy and exercising, exercises. <laughs> Just so important in getting those serotonin levels up. Again, they're just as good as, as medicine is. Unless, if you're scoring even higher, um, up to 15, you need to see a doctor then and need to be on medication at that point. Um, now, medication, you know, what do you think about medication for depression? Do you have any, any thoughts about that? Any critical negative thinking about, the, about those medicines? What would you heard about? Anything? They cause depression. They cause depression? And suicidal thoughts. And suicidal thoughts. Okay. That, that's all wrong. Um, completely <laughs> wrong. And where that came from is in adolescence. And this is the reason when I'm treating adolescents or, or young adults, I always follow up with them in a week. Um, young people, sometimes these antidepressants can actually hype them up and they think they're Superman or whatever and they'll jump off buildings. Um, but again, that's only younger people, and if they're followed up after a week, if you see that, then you just stop the medicine. Um, there are medicines that cause depression. Uh, alcohol is one, Valium, a lot of those um, benzodiazepine type medicines, they're all depressive medicines. I'll give you a story. There was a missionary in Taiwan, um, and he had been on Valium for muscle relaxing, which is good, but he, he stayed on it. And I saw him, and he was depressed, and all I did was stop his medicine, and he got better. Again, so a lot of medications can actually cause depression, 
but the medicines for depression, they won't cause depression. All they do is up your serotonin levels. They'll get serotonin levels up and you'll start feeling better. Um, and then you can get into more of the, where you get in contact with people, you're not withdrawing, you're sleeping better, you're eating better. So medicines are good. Again, it's just like having pneumonia. Um, I'm gonna give you an antibiotic and you're gonna get better. With depression, when it's severe like this, I give a medicine and I treat with cognitive behavioral therapy. Those two things together, usually I just keep people on medicines for six months and then they come off. Um, so the medicines are good, just like antibiotics. And if you have a pneumonia, you're still, remember? Um, but again, really what I want to talk about tonight is just preventive medicine, sort of mild, mild depression, uh, which we all tend to get on Monday mornings or or whenever. Again, you'll see it a lot of times after a high, then you will crash them and, uh, you know, go low again. So I think I've covered about everything that I wanted to um, cover here. I want to leave a lot of time for questions. And, um, but again, just look at the test. You can see things that we just talked about. Um, you don't have interest or pleasure in doing things, you know, things that you would like to do, you just don't want to do it more. Um, if you're feeling down or depressed or again, hopeless, um, problems sleeping, either you can't get to sleep or you're sleeping too much, either of those problems. Um, feeling tired, having little energy. What do you do when you feel tired or don't have energy? Huh? Exercise, that's right. What does exercise do? It's your serotonin levels are good for you all. That's right. Um, so I, I don't I don't want you out running around the block, not not with heat or anything, but, but walking is fine. Walk walking's good. And you can do that in your mornings. Um, poor appetite, overeating, either of those feeling bad about yourself, you're a failure. Um, again, what is this? Feeling bad about yourself, your failure, uh, let your family down. What, what do we call that? Negative thinking. Negative thinking. So you have to, again, look at Philippians 4 8. Is that really true? Is that true? Um, or are you a failure? Um, you let yourself down, you know, blaming yourself. But that's not, you know, that's not true. Um, trouble concentrating on things, that, that's really key. Um, we don't see this one so much, number eight, where you're being slow or, or hyped up. Younger people tend to have more of that problem. Um, and again, the spiritual aspect where Satan is coming in thinking you'd be better off dead or hurting yourself in some way, we're getting pretty pretty bad with that, with that one. Um, so again, um, prophylaxis, rest is just a, a big priority. You have to take your Sabbaths. If you don't take your Sabbath, what happens? You get sick. You know, France, I don't know, when was it, 1800s, 1700s? They went through a 10-day work week. They just said, oh, we don't want that seven days. That's Christian or whatever. They threw it out and had 10 days. Not only did the people get sick, but the animals got sick. Um, so they threw that out and went back to the seven-day week, which is what the Lord ordained, right? So take a Sabbath. It doesn't have to be on Sunday, but that's the day where you're, where you're resting. Um, I always worry about Christian workers a lot. Um, I saw this a lot in the missionaries. They just 24-7, they're, they're going and, and uh, they burn out. So just be careful of that. Um, and uh, friends, your emotional support, getting out the steam that we talked about. Um, spiritual, just getting into the songs, music, again, just keeping the music going. Um, and watch your crit critical, your negative thinking. Um, so. I'm going to go time wise here. That's good. I'm just going to open it up for questions. Any questions at all? Anybody here depressed? It's okay. If I ask anybody to have a cold or samples, you'd raise your hand, wouldn't you? Yeah, so don't, again, I don't want this, this to have this stigma. <coughs> Excuse me, the stigma about uh, depression. Doesn't mean we're weak. Doesn't mean that. Uh, you know, that we failed in some way. Again, that's negative thinking. Um, I think it's normal to have some depression. I mean, Charles and I were married 55 years, 
and my whole, you know, I lost, lost my home, I lost my job, I lost my husband. You know, it was, I had a right to be depressed. That's right, exactly. That's what I'm saying. We get physical illness, we have emotional illness. And again, these are things to keep us from, we're going to spiral a little bit. Every Monday I'm going to spiral. <laughs> but then you, you do these things that I've said and you, you know, you get yourself back up. This is just mild. Um, if you continue spiraling, that's when we need intervention at that point. Um, but ex again, exercise, listen to the music, um, getting support from your friends. All sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good, good, good. I think that's one of the things you do is it says to do things, you know, because you know that when you go shopping or whatever, that helps you feel better, so you choose the things. That you enjoy doing. Enjoy doing. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, friend, a close friend who has lost her husband as well. But, um, I did not know what she was going through until I had to go to her. So we really, really connected. Yeah, that's good. After that, I mean, it was just. Yeah. Because you do not know until you have experienced it. Yeah. Well, actually, First Corinthians talks about that. You know, we go through suffering a lot of times just to be able to help each other. And Janet. I don't know if you want to come on, just come up and give your testimony about that, honey. Um, just real quick. So, just so people at home can hear you on the mic. Oh. Um, <laughs> I'm talking about how I've used you in okay. the office and everything, too. Yeah. Um, I'm not prepared, but I'll just tell what I. Um, I had postpartum depression. Maybe some of you who are mothers had that, too, and you know what that was like. Um, but it, it was scary because I never experienced depression like that before, or had it. I didn't know what was happening to me. And um, I, like Randy was saying, everything was negative, everything was bad. Um, and uh, I wasn't sleeping, my mind was staying, um, I couldn't calm down, um, and I was exhausted, and I was mad at him. <laughs> so um, finally, um, yeah, we didn't talk about anger. Anger can be a big part, big part of, of depression. Of depression. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, God just really met me. I, I, I did read the Psalms. Um, I, I kept calling out to God, and he met me um, using the story, really, of Peter. Um, he gave me this visual of myself being like Peter, um, sinking in the water, and Jesus just reaching out and grabbing him. But it was Jesus grabbing me and holding me and telling me I love you. And and it was like he was telling me, I love you, you're gonna get better. And it was it just woke me up and I realized I wanna get better, something's not right. So I told Randy and it was like, Oh, you know, you need to go to rest, you need rest. And he didn't know, I didn't tell him what was happening, because I was mad at him. <laughs> but um he he, he, he got got help for me right away and helped me sleep. And he got me out exercising, which I hadn't been doing. And um, uh, and, and uh, journaling helped me a lot. I, I began writing, um, just because I read scripture, I'd write scripture, and then I would um, think of a thought that was in my head, and I would say, is this, would God tell me that? Is that something God would say? And I would write it down, and I'd, I'd write the, that thought down, and I said, no, God doesn't say that kind of thing. That's a lie. And then I felt that's not from God. That's from my own. It's not true. It's not true. It's not. It's it's my own thinking or it's Satan trying to confuse me. And I would just um, reject that thought. And then I would start thanking God and praising God. So the scriptures really helped me. Uh, the Psalms really helped me to battle those uh, thoughts. And anyway, so I uh, I did um, end up needing medicine that was more um, severe. severe. And I'm thankful. They really did help me. They helped me just to be able to think clearly, and um, and I was um, able to get over it and got better. And I don't need it anymore. <laughs> so, um, anyway. Yeah, that was one of the earlier. Uh, we used Prozac. You know, Prozac. I call it vitamin P. Is what it is. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So actually, what Janet and because she had gone through that, I saw a lot of. Um, Folks that were depressed when I was in southern Taiwan. When a woman was depressed, 
I would send her to Jana. I told her how to do cognitive behavioral therapy, just thinking what's true and working through that. So she would meet with the women then, and uh, we saw um, a lot of uh, folks come to the Lord. One one particular lady came in. Um, she would not make eye contact with me the whole time she was told. She was really suicidal, and um, and she became a Christian later, and just uh, just changed so much that her family came to church and said, what's happened to my daughter? What's happened to our mom? She's just a new person. And uh, so a lot of people came to the Lord really through her. Um, so any other, any other questions or, or thoughts about tonight? Um, I think one thing that we probably deal with when we're a little wiser and more mature is the loss of our, our health, being able to do we can't do what we could do before. And it's easy just to withdraw and to um, think, God, oh, I just can't do that. Again, is that is that true? You know, can you walk? <laughs> you you can get out and walk. Um, can you, you know, meet with your friends? And I'm sure you can. Again, this negative thinking is really one of the early signs that we see in depression, just thinking, I'm never going to get better. This is, I'm just going to get worse and worse and worse. And, and um, so what happens if you think that? You do. You do. <laughs> That's right. So uh, yeah. So just be careful about that. Any other? Any other thoughts? Any other questions? How do you help somebody that keeps refusing your help? That you know are depressed and they just don't die for all the help. Who's the thing? Okay. Uh, or Family or friends. friends. Well, first of all, alcohol. Repeat that question. Um, Cass just wanted to know how we can help people um, that refuse help. Maybe they're going with alcohol. Alcohol is actually a depressant. A lot of times, just if you if this alcohol is a problem, you need to have a confrontation with the whole family. A lot of times, just stopping the alcohol will cure the depression. Um, it, it feeds into each other. You get depressed and you drink, but that just makes you more and more depressed. And, Still and severe, severe, yeah. Um, so the little test on the back is good. If you, you know, you can get them to take that, and um, that gives them a little bit of insight into what's going on. But again, if alcohol, if alcohol is involved, that's that's a depressing drug, and that's just going to make them more depressed. So, um, thanks, family. Well, that's when you're depressed, you do sleep too much. Yeah, that's just one of the symptoms. Um, so they, an intervention is probably, when somebody's refusing everything, you just get a lot of his family and friends together for intervention and say, you've got to see a doctor. Um, you know, we'll, we'll take you, we'll help you. You, you know, you support them in every way that you can. Well, I was, you, you weren't here when I was saying this, but um, a lot of people, when I see them, even, they'll say, well, I don't need any treatment. I'll just pull myself up on my bootstraps. And I explained to them, if they came in with a fever and chest pain and a cough, and I did an x-ray and they had pneumonia, are they going to tell me, that's okay, doc, I'll just pull myself up on my bootstraps and get better? That's not going to happen. Depression's like having a pneumonia in your soul needs to be treated just like pneumonia needs to be treated you can't you can't fix it yourself when you're severely depressed you can't pull yourself up by your bootstraps it just gets worse and worse understand yeah i know it's hard when you see one of your loved ones going through that and again the interventions um if you're a spouse they're probably not going to listen to you anyway <laughs> so uh, so you, you get friends or a doctor or someone to you know, help them to, to intervene, especially if it's severe. Yeah. Mild, if it's mild, you um, take them by the hand, get out and walk with them and uh, pray with them. And, um, you know, keep music on in the home. A lot of things you can do so sort of passively though, and uh, praying with them and those sorts of things. they don't think it's going to happen to me, and then if they do recognize it, they don't want to admit it. 
That's why I gave you the little test on the back there. A lot of times you can use that even to look at a person and say, oh, yeah, this is not doing this, or doing this, or doing that. So that will help you to evaluate them. And if they're willing, they them to take this little test. This is what I use in the office all the time. It helps me to make decisions then. Because sometimes animals are a help. Yes, they are. Excellent. That's a good, good point. Puppy dogs, goldfish, anything you can talk to. <laughs> Their eyes tearful. They tear you up. <laughs> That's right. See any other, any other questions or thoughts at all? But if you get help, you can defeat it. That's right. You, you can, exactly. It's just like you want to, you will get better. You'll get better for sure. And don't be afraid of the medicines. <laughs> um, again, you, you know, if you're worried you're going to commit suicide or something after a week, um, you know, you get started on medicine. All my patients, I just touch base with them in a week and see how they're doing. If you're going to have side effects, you have them in a week. Um, so, again, the medicines, the main thing they do is just get that serotonin level back up. That's the, that's the purpose of them. So, if the medicines don't make you drowsy, they don't. They really don't have side effects at all for when you're, you know, wiser and more mature like we are. Um, they, uh, they're, they're, good, they're good drugs. And uh, a lot of times people may have had side effects. So I find out if someone in their family was on a medicine and it worked, then that medicine will work for them. And actually psychiatrists now have a test they can do if you're having a lot of side effects. They'll do a test and see which medicine works best for you. Which is really a nice, uh, nice test that they can take. But again, we're talking about more severe depression here. That needs, needs medication. So good, good. Any other thoughts? Before we close. Okay, good, good. So let's uh, let's pray. Father, I just uh, thank you so much that you are a very present help in time of trouble and. Um, you know our thoughts. Father, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. and um, You know how we are physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And so I just uh, ask your protection for each of us from the evil one who would seek to discourage us and to put lies into our hearts. Father, we might really look at Philippians 4 and really see what's true, what's praiseworthy, what we can be thankful for. So many things, Father, we can be thankful for. Help us just to focus on those. And do you just pray for each one here tonight that um, you would be their help and uh, maybe they may be dealing with a loved one that they feel like is depressed and again, just give them wisdom and knowing how best to, to help them. Um, especially just pray for this one that Kat's concerned about. Uh, Father, just for a real change in that person's life. We just pray for a miracle there. Um, again, we just commit, commit everything to you for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray.